know exactly what's happening, don't you? Hello world, this is Dallas Michael Jones and I'm Toy Thomas, the author of the Eternal Curse series. We are almost down to the crunch. We're still learning about our influences to bone up just in time for the release of the sequel, Eternal Curse Battleground, which will be coming out in May of this year at the Tidewater Comic Con in Virginia Beach. Here's some things you can look forward to. But I'm so excited that this time around I'm actually going to be part of the event and Dallas is excited too. All right then. Well, you know, Dallas has come up with some more questions again to find out about the classic literature um, story, um, stories and influences that helped me write the Eternal Curse series. So, here we go. Very good question, Dallas. Let's see. When I started writing The Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel, I wasn't trying to pull from here and there, but I couldn't deny that I was influenced by certain things. Then, once I released the book and started getting reviews, I realized that other people were picking up on some of those very same things, and also a couple that I hadn't actually considered. So today, I'm actually going to be talking about some influences, and also some things that I didn't realize at the time that obviously influenced me probably indirectly. They're all great stories. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that could have influenced, you know, the writing of Eternal Curse of Bonnie's Angel, this is what I could think of. Beauty and the Beast, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Stories of Peter Pan, um, The Stories of Secret Garden, um, Rappuccini's Daughter, Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz, um, oh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. So there's lots of stuff that could have kind of played a role. Who knows if it all made it in there. Um, well, Dallas, I guess I'd say Beauty and the Beast, Peter Pan, and Jekyll and Hyde. First, Beauty and the Beast. Now, I'm not saying that my characters of Mira and Giovanni are nearly as glamorous or and frightening as Beauty and the Beast, but there is a correlation. Obviously, Mira would be my beauty, Giovanni slash Letzian would be my beast, and um, their story, I guess, parallels in the fact that Mira does go to this far off kind of isolated place in order to be with Giovanni. So there's your Beauty and the Beast reference. Next would be Jekyll and Hyde. I have to say that I've always adored this story. I've always appreciated fantasy, um, superhero stories, science fiction, things like that. But especially in movies, the idea of shape-shifting never really captured my heart. I mean, the idea of a vampire turning into a tiny little bat or a grown man turning into a scrawny dog just didn't do a whole lot for me. They were great stories and I liked them, but it wasn't until the idea of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde really set into my mind that shape-shifting take on a whole new perspective. Obviously over time um, stories have evolved and improved and of course my mind has been more open-minded to these kinds of stories, but it was the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that really made me think that this idea could be plausible. It gave it some type of you know validity it was more about the duality of man. This idea is all over the Eternal Curse series. Specifically, it plays a role in some of my half-breed characters and some of the interesting abilities that they have, not to mention Giovanni Bletzian. I won't say any more than that. Then, of course, there's the influence that I get from Peter Pan. I have always been a fan of the Neverland Tales. I mean, for the longest time, I wanted to be a lost boy. Not that I didn't love my family, but I thought it would have been cool to go to Neverland. So in Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel, you know, it starts out with a boy who doesn't grow for a very long time. I mean, he thinks that he never will. Of course he does, but then eventually as a grown man, he thinks that he'll never die. So we don't really find out how that plays out until the very end. And then, you know, we get into book two where we actually meet an eternal youth. So obviously these influences came from the idea of, of the boy who never grows up. I've always wondered though, does Peter Pan not grow up because he doesn't want to or because he can't? 
Is it because he doesn't leave Neverland or is there something else going on? Always something to think about. All right, well for this one, I'm gonna go with Jekyll and Hyde and Alice in Wonderland. When it comes to character influences, it's, you know, it's easy to pull from whole stories, but every now and then specific characters come to mind. For Giovanni Bletzian, I have to say Jekyll and Hyde. This whole idea of shape-shifting, the duality of man, it's all there. There's not really a whole lot I need to say about that. But the second character influence that I really think stands out would be the case of Alice in Wonderland. In my story, Mira would be my Alice. Just like Alice, she falls down the rabbit hole expecting her adventures to be fun and amazing, to blow her mind around her while they do all that and then some. So just like Alice, Mira must decide, does she stay in Wonderland forever or does she go back to the life that she left behind? All right, so I am ready for this challenge. I've been thinking about it. Here we go, Dallas. In terms of classic literature influences, I would say that Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel, is the story of a beauty who meets the Jekyll and Hyde beast on a journey through a solemn and confusing Neverland filled with nightmares. But there is hope on the horizon. Alrighty, well, that's all I have for today. I don't want to overwhelm this little guy, but I think he already has plenty to keep his mind full with everything that he's learned. Um, on my next episode, he will be learning about what's actually going to be happening in Book 2, Eternal Curse Battleground. So stick around for that. Um, if you like what you saw in this episode, don't be shy. Check the link below. Pick up your copy of Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel. Also, to learn some more of the influences, where are you going? It's not over yet. You can also check out 40 Days and Nights of Eternal Curse, the official companion guide. You can hop over to Pinterest to check out my Eternal Curse storyboards to find out about some dream soundtrack ideas and even some actors that I think could play these characters. Um, if you want to join the conversation, um, you can follow me on Twitter. Let me know what book or movie you think was influenced by some other creative work. Use the hashtag influenced, and there might be a surprise in it for you. Check the links below for more. And don't forget, Eternal Curse Battleground does come out on May 16th at the Tidewater Comic Con in Virginia Beach and online, but you can pre-order now. Again, check the links below. And last but definitely not least, I am doing a big pre-order giveaway. I will give away a $25 Amazon gift card and some other goodies. He's tired, so that's all we have. Say bye-bye, Dallas. Dallas, are you ready to be a star? Look at me. Look at me, Dallas. You don't care. <laughs> All right. Get up. Stand. Stand. Oh, he's tuckered out. Come on, stand. Treat. Treat. Stand. Hello. Um, Taylor, go get him a treat. You need to perk your energy up, huh? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. It's almost over, I promise. Are you recording? Mm -hmm.